Hello there YouTubers. Um, this is just a, a short video. Probably one of the hardest videos I've had to make. I've uh, had quite a hard time the last couple of weeks. My father has passed away. So um, I haven't been putting any videos up and you know what he's like. He's uh, He passed away quietly though to be fair. Uh, we were with him when he passed away. But I just thought I'd do this small little video to say um, it's a very very sad day at the farm and it's hard to deal with it if you're not doing anything so I'm going to try and get on with my normal stuff because he don't want me to and that's it really. He had quite an interesting life the old guy. He, he was 88 year old and he witnessed the building of a, a Clearwind Dam from the ground up because he lived right in front of it and was born just behind it before the dam was built. And he took the very first shovels and things up there to start the job when he was young. And then in World War II uh, he was a young lad and he was in school in the Elan Valley, Elan Village School and Barnes Wallace from the Dam Busters came there to give a lecture and they tested some small explosions on a dam then above a miniature dam they made above the uh, Elan Village and Dad watched that. It's an incredible life he had and then They went through some quite bad times when they were farmers up there. The, they had the 1947 storm and hundreds and hundreds of sheep were killed in the storm then because they didn't have any sheep and fodder that they could buy like these days and travel there. So they would just, the sheep would die on the hill because nothing to eat. Stuck in drifts and things like I told you before. On the one farm where he was, Kerrick up there, there was I'm sure there was well over 300 sheep had died in that one farm and thousands in the two farms. It was a terrible time for them. Then they had the very first foot and mouse scare, which nobody really talks about now, and that was just as bad. There was thousands of sheep killed around you then, and they were brutal then. They would just kill everything. It was nothing, well, ten times worse than what it was a few years ago. Uh, Anyway, my dad then was uh, living at Kerrick up there and they were live firing during the World War, to start a World War II from Sennybridge Ranges over to about a mile above his house. And he was stood there with the soldiers guiding him in by radio. So it's hard to believe that they <laughs> wouldn't allow that now, would they? So uh, I just thought you might find it e interesting. So, um, after that then, obviously he grew up on the farm at home and got a bit of itchy feet then and uh, he decided to go to Canada. So they were doing £20 tickets to go on the boat to emigrate to Canada so he went over there. So he went from the farm, never been from radar ever before or the Ellen, uh, Clearwind Valley and he went on the ship and he said every single person on the ship was spewing <laughs> from seasick because they'd never been on a boat before and all the corridors were full of it he always tells me about that, it was a horrible experience he said and he got to Canada then and he worked on a prairie farm there and he's with a horse and a single furrow plough and it would take him most of the morning just to do one length of the field of this thing it was incredible what he was up to there and he worked there for quite a while sleeping in the barn and things they they treated him a bit like a slave there and then he decided to go and walk about then because he'd had enough of them so i don't know if you heard of him before you know the hobos he sort of became one of them he um just had the clothes he lived, he bought in Raider before he went, and he just travelled round Canada, 
on the trains like that. And uh, he got pretty destitute there one turn, and I remember him telling me that uh, he sold the coat he'd bought in Raider before he went to Canada for a cup of coffee. He was at Skint. And uh, he thought he'd better do something about it then. So he um, went straight off to the Army Recruitment Office in Canada and he joined the Princess, Princess Patricia's, Patricia's, Princess Patricia's Battalion of the British uh, Army. And he was there for a long, long time then. He was there for well, four or five years, I think. And he had a great time there. He was uh, stationed in Canada and they went to Germany. And uh, he went to Belsen concentration camp, a whole regiment did, to see what that was like. It was a hell of an experience, he said. Very sober an experience. And then when some of his mates were out in Germany, they were in a pub one night. And this huddle of people come in. And there was a hell of a commotion. They wondered what was going on. And it was Elvis. He was uh, in his army uniform, surrounded by loads and loads of people. He didn't actually talk to him, but he remembers it well, he said. So. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, he earned some money then, saved some money, and uh, worked, enough, uh, saved enough money to come home and things like that. And he came home and he bought this farm then. And uh, he's been here ever since, really. He's a hell of a character, real character. But, um, yeah, they used to have a pony trekking in Radio, and he used to be the, the guide on that. And during the 70s, they had well over a hundred pony trekkers going out at once. So it was just him and one other looking after these people. So, uh, five days a week. There was a massive amount of tourists then in this area. It was before the package holidays and things. And uh, he had a hell of a time then. He was a young lad and he sort of, <laughs> like most people do, wine, women and fun, isn't it? And uh, there's a, he ended up parked halfway into a shop window with his van one one night. He'd lost control of it, went in the van, went into the window, lost his license. Uh, another time he was coming home, pissed, driving home and uh, he thought the police were chasing him. Got home and it was uh, the moon in the mirror, the rear room mirror. But don't judge him for that, remember in this area, pretty near 98% of everybody drunk and drive then. It was a long time ago, so it was a common thing, so it, obviously you wouldn't do that now, but back then, in the 70s, it was, you could count on one hand people that didn't do it, so um, I don't condone, condone it at all, but it was what everybody did. So, um, while he was on the trek in then, uh, this famous actor came there. I'm trying to remember his name now. Oh God, what's his name? God, why is that going up in my head now? He was a bit of a pisshead, he was. Uh, he died while making that film, The Gladiator. And they got a couple of clips of him in there. What's his name? Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed came there. And my dad was a bit of a hard nut then, because he'd come out of the army and he... He was a hard nut to be there. And uh, Oliver Reed and that started giving him a bit of lip. And <laughs> he squared up to Oliver Reed and threatened him a bit and told him to piss off, basically. <laughs> Unbelievable what he went through, indeed. So, like I said, he was a good, good father to me, like. And good fun as well. Good fun. So. It's an end of an era, yeah, really. Very, very sad, very sad. 
I thought you might like to hear some of the things they used to get up to and maybe I'll say some more stories in the next uh, few other vids but um, I'll put this one up and to tell you the reason why I haven't been posting anything um, I'll try and put the videos up like normal from now on he would have liked me to carry on so see you again